This is it, guys, the prelude to the Ghostbusters event we've all been waiting for since the miniseries Ghostbusters Get Real from 2015 and last year's Ghostbusters 101. Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Ghostbusters Annual 2018 leads directly into the new miniseries from IDW Publishing and all-star ghost heads Eric Burnham and Dan Sconing, who've brought us every Ghostbusters story since Dan first began doing the art for Ghostbusters in a holiday one-shot during the Haunted Holidays trade paperback from 2010, and Eric began working on the title during the Infestation two-parter from 2011. The story opens once again with a tunnel crew stumbling upon an ancient artifact six stories underground. Of course, with this being Ghostbusters, one of the tunnel crew doesn't want to wait and possibly share the wealth of the discovery and opens the artifact, which leads the Ghostbusters being called in. After the Ghostbusters arrive, they search the tunnels and come across a being with a pumpkin-like head just sitting in midair. Ray obviously wants to communicate with it, but in straight-up Venkman fashion, he says, let's just not follow Ray if he tells us to get it. Eventually, the being transforms into several hundred ectoplasmic bats and slimes nearly every member of the team, save for Peter, who barely got any on him as usual. Back at the firehouse, Ron Alexander has returned from Chicago to undergo his proton relicensing as part of his pardon. The hilarity ensues as Ray continuously jabs at Ron, making him the punching bag for the team. Eventually, the team tracks the entity to Liberty Island and Kylie figures out his name. But just when they're about to be overwhelmed with spirits, Egon gets help. From every dimension in the IDW multiverse, it's the Ghostbusters. Every single team across the multiverse. I have to tell you guys, this was a really great issue. The back and forth between Ron and Ray, it was almost like Ray had become another Venkman. The constant jabs at Ron's expense, even Egon got in on the action. Although, Kylie figuring out the entity's name was a bit anticlimactic for my taste. They could have strung it along a little bit more, but it's all a matter of writing taste. We don't get a lot of Peter or Winston in this issue, but in the last few pages we do get two Kylies in one panel. We get the answer to the call Ghostbusters, and Jillian teaming up with Ron to begin work on something they've been wanting to get their hands on for a very long time. I can't wait for the continuation when we receive Ghostbusters crossing over later this month. Once again, Eric and Dan did a great job, and if another Ghostbusters film is ever made, Sony truly needs to hire these guys as advisors during the script writing process and the filming because they truly know their stuff. Each of their miniseries could easily be turned into an animated film. In fact, why haven't IDW and Sony teamed up to do that yet? I mean, Marvel and DC both get their animated movies. This would be a great way for IDW to draw even more interest into their publications. And what better title to start with than Ghostbusters? Especially if their first animated movie were Ghostbusters Mass Hysteria, which I've always said should have been a film. IDW, Sony, Sconing, and Burnham could make loads of cash if they took these stories and transformed them into animated movies. Start with Mass Hysteria then move into Ghostbusters Ninja Turtles, followed by Ghostbusters Get Real, Ghostbusters 101, Ghostbusters Ninja Turtles Part 2, and then Ghostbusters Crossing Over. That's six full-length animated films that could bring in loads of profit for IDW and Sony. So go out to your local comic book shop today, or head on over to Comixology.com and pick up your copy of Ghostbusters Annual 2018, and be sure to keep your eyes open for Ghostbusters crossing over. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV. Take care, my friends.